All right, so welcome to welcome to this presentation, a bit of a webinar on crypto during COVID. You know, it's been a it's been a long year and a little bit as we haven't been able to go to the pubs and we haven't been able to go out and do too much. So I spent a lot of my my year and a bit inside the crypto world, like expanding and you know building things from crypto exchanges to mining to trading to all these different things. So I thought I'd take a minute to maybe actually probably thirty minutes to share some of these like things that we've been up to. Um, so me and my one of my partners, we've basically been over in um, Dubai, we've been in London, been in Iceland. And so we want to take this opportunity to sort of share with you some of these things. Now, obviously, these are our own personal strategies. So, you know, please seek, per, you know, seek financial advice, like don't just copy these blindly and go, well, you know, I know everything about crypto now because I watched a 40 minute webinar. So I'm just going to take you through some of the things that have been happening in the last sort of 18 months in the crypto world. So as, as I said, you know, ask an expert, but these are, these are our, my own strategies. So one of the things that's happening is crypto is changing the world. And people might go, yeah, but it's, you know, it's this figmented sort of uh, virtual currency. And like, why, why is it actually changing the world? And not many people really sit down and take the time to explain it. So I thought I'd take a moment to sort of really show you why and, and how it's escalated up to be what it is today. And you may have heard also before I get into that, like the Coinbase just got valued and went on the stock exchange yesterday where Coinbase is one of the places where you can buy cryptocurrency and trade it. And it's now valued at more than BP. So here's, you know, the oil it used to be like the, from the 1970s all the way through to the 2000s, like the, you know, black gold as they would call it. And now here you've got crypto, a crypto firm being valued at one at more than one of the giant oil companies. But what's driving that? Like what really is, is bringing that to fruition? So the number one thing is it's a bit of geopolitics. And this is quite, a, this is something not many people understand. There's a scenario where the US dollar is one of the most traded currencies in the world. I'm about to show you some statistics on that in a minute. And China, rather than going to war, war is its last option, is actually de trying to shift the US currency off being the number one traded currency in the world. Now, for you, that's great because it creates volatility. You know, as two nations battle it out, you can definitely profit in the middle of that as it goes up and it goes down, as it goes up and as it goes down. But let me let me show you some statistics. So here's, you know, here's a picture of the wild ride. So let's have a look at this. What's the most traded currency in the world? Right now, 88.3% is the US dollar. And if you scroll right down, you can see the RIMBY there, 4.3. And Peter Thiel, who found PayPal, said it threatens fiat money, but especially threatens the US dollar. So here's a perfect way for China not to go to war, but to shift America off its podium of being number one by targeting its currency and making it not the number one traded currency in the world anymore and trying to bring crypto up to overtake it. Now, if you can imagine that, US loses a lot of its power, which is an interesting scenario. It's an interesting world to even conjure. But from a crypto perspective, if you're a crypto enthusiast, it makes a land of opportunities. So, you know, so if, I, if you read some of these comments on this page, I do wonder whether at this point, Bitcoin could also be thought of in part as a Chinese financial weapon against the US, Teal. You know, and Peter was the one of the guys that was seed funder of PayPal. So it gives you an idea of like the, the insights this man has. And he's invested in many, many things since then. It threatens fiat money, especially the US dollar. If China's long on Bitcoin, meaning they're investing for the long term, perhaps a geopolitical perspective, the US should be asking some tougher questions exactly how it works. Now, obviously, these two countries are going to war against each other and, you know, cybersecurity, you know, they, they ate in, in over in Asia. They're also now warring on each other in currencies. And so let's let's talk a little bit about how that may help you during lockdown, how it might put some extra money in your pocket, how it may show you where the world is changing to. So what's some of the things that have happened while we're in lockdown? So, you know, we've had crypto payments. We've had crypto artwork. We've had token sales, we've had trading, we've had smart contracts, we've had DeFi, uh, DeFi crypto loans, we've had holding, we've had altcoins. So I'm going to talk to you a lot about these different things and sort of go through each one of them. Because some of those is like this weird language, like what, what is this guy talking about? Like DeFi, NFT, like what, what is that? So I want to go through them one at a time 
and talk to them about how they can really help you you know, with your crypto trading strategy or even your crypto in, in the real world when it eventuates. So what's the first one? NFT, the world of art, the world of collectibles. So there's been this big shift now of like, well, you know, I used to buy a painting, but how do I trade digital works? How do I trade movies? How do I trade videos? How do I trade all these different things that are not a physical painting? They may be an icon, they may be a movie, they may be film, a game to a game figurine or a game uh, character inside an online world. So there's a new thing now, non-fungible tokens, where you can actually buy and sell these things online. To give you an idea, one fun, non-fungible token, this one in front of you, 69 million. So you can start to see like these things, are, they're, they're big money. I'm in Dubai right now, just last week. This gentleman here was painting a Lamborghini to music and filming it to be sold as an NFT. Now I have no idea what this is worth, but it gives you some of the ideas of like some of the things that are going on out there in the world and how it's changing the world. So if you're an art, you know, if you know, like, oh, look, I'm not into trading and this guy's boring me with the trading, but you're an artist or you're into movies or you're into any of these things, these are now able to be sold online as non-fungible tokens. So really great for people, for the artists of the world who've always had trouble in like, how do I commoditize my art? How do I make a living? Now one new way through crypto. So let's move on to the next thing. 97% of the women interviewed by Wazinga thought crypto was a waste of time because you couldn't buy things with it. So what did we see? Well, Wazinga launched a payment service other providers have launched a payment service. We're now seeing Bitcoin ATMs spring up everywhere. So you can withdraw your cryptocurrency if you need to turn it into real cash in the world. We've seen Tesla now where you can purchase a Tesla with your Bitcoin. If you ran a business, now is the time to actually start looking at accepting crypto, accepting Bitcoin as a payment method. Because there's so much money locked up in the crypto now. It's like for over $400 billion. And these people have no way to actually spend their, spend this. But it's starting to come online. And if you're someone that likes to be on the forefront of things, or someone who likes to you know, um, get involved with things early, this is a really good way that you can get in there and access additional customers, access additional people who wouldn't be able to spend in a traditional store. I mean, they're not going to walk into an M&S if, you, if you're in the UK or a McDonald's and purchase with crypto yet. But if you're first and you're a market leader and you get out there and you have it, you now have access to people who want to spend in crypto and, and haven't been able to up until this point. Then there's trading, if you're, if you're interested in trading. And here's some of the major coins that you're sort of seeing at the top of the top of the pile at the moment. You know, and you're even seeing people like Elon Musk get involved, you know, Dogecoin, it's the people's crypto, you know, and here he is promoting the fact of that, you know, Dogecoin is the new people standard. And, on, and you can see on the screen, you know, it says it's inevitable, the Dogecoin standard takes over the global financial system. Now, it's probably pretty extreme, but if you're into trading and you're into following social media and you're interested in following trends, things like just this tweet from Elon can drive the price through the roof where you could double, triple your money easily. The thing is, this is really different from an old world. In an old world, you know, you looked at the, the PE ratio and you looked at the returns and the dividends and you're looking at the balance sheet where a lot of these companies, it's nothing more than a celebrity tweeted about it. Or, you know, Elon says, this thing's new. And it, it basically that goes and it goes flying up. So if you're someone that like lives online, you know, this can be a good strategy for you just to really follow the news media, follow the, you know, put um, uh, alerts on Google and really follow what's happening in the emotional, because this is just an emotional roller coaster that's setting the price. There doesn't feel to be any real super substance behind it. So how do you do that? If, you know, if you're like, oh, well, I'm new, I, I don't understand. This all sounds like just some letters on a page for me. Well, the first thing you need to do is, is get yourself on an exchange and secure yourself. Now, if you look on the right-hand side over here, that you can see there's, there's this thing called the Tezza one and a billfold. 
Now, these are the new ways to get like get yourself online during the in, the, in this crypto world and keep yourself safe. So you can you know, basically hook up this hardware thing and it's like having your own security token for the bank and it keeps you totally secure. Because one of the things you hear about there is, you know, out there is like, oh, I lost my crypto, I was hacked, I was all these different things. You know, sometimes I believe them, 90% of the times I think they're sort of like a false story. Uh, you know, I hear someone, oh, I lost a million in crypto and I'm like, hmm. I look at them and I evaluate them and I understand their knowledge of crypto. And I think, mm, I don't really think you ever had a million dollars in crypto, but it's a great story to tell when the pubs reopen, right? So, you know, if you're going to get online, look, do make sure you're secure. I definitely don't think it's as scary as some people make it out to be. But there's a couple of strategies when you're trading. So let's say we, we got our exchange account. We got online with our Tesla. We, we know we're safe now. Well, one of the first strategy out there is called the holder strategy. And it's sometimes explained as an acronym for hold on for dear life. And that this means is you basically put your cash into Bitcoin and then you just sit and you wait and you watch it and you watch it go up and you watch it go down. And then you're like, okay, all right, um, I'm just going to sit there and I'm just going to watch it go up. Because one of the things about Bitcoin is it's a, it's a currency that there's only a limited amount of ever distributed and there can't be any more. So what happens is it keeps the pressure on it where the price of it is always going to rise. Well, I can't say always, but so far it's always risen because it's just a limited supply, a little bit like diamonds. If you limit the supply of diamonds, you know, then the price of the diamond will go up because there's demand for it. So there's this strategy called the holder. And it just basically means that you, you sit on it, you hold it, and you just wait for it, the price to rise. But you know, we've been sort of playing with these things over the crypto thing. And we're like, yeah, is that enough? Like you just buy something and just sit on it. You know, that used to be what happened in property. What else could you do? Well, one of the things you could do is you could trade. So you could get in there and like learn how to trade, you know, learn your Bollinger Bands, go do some courses. Because there's such volatility, and I told you before with the, the China and the Americas going against each other and, you know, all these other side influences and people inflating the price, it's a little bit different to the standard stock market where, you know, in the standard stock market, there's a regulator and a lot of protection. Where this is a little bit more wild westy, as I told you, like an emotional, a tweet from Elon can send the price up and crashing back down. So, you, you know, it's good to be able to know what you're doing. And sometimes people don't like this as much because the technicals don't always work. It's sometimes just, you know, a celebrity can just drive the price right up. But over the break, over the same crypto COVID period, there's been auto bots that you can get. So machine intelligence, auto trading, you know, here's one called Crypto Hopper. There's quite a few out there right now where you just put your crypto in and then you tell it, look, I want you to be aggressive and it will start doing the trading for you and following the line so you can go do something else while it's trading. Now, I can't always guarantee you that make money, but it's made me money. Um, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. It's probably not the the way that's going to make you the most amount of money, but you know, like this is just something that I've definitely done in this break. But what if I wanted to combine different things? What if I wanted to bring bring it all together? What if I wanted to make revenue from multiple different things? Well, here's some here's some more advanced things I've been doing. So this is new thing called DeFi, which is decentralized finance, and this is where instead of having a bank, you have the blockchain. And what happens is people put their money in and they lend it to other people. So what does this mean? It looks a little bit like this. People invest their money. There's the crypto lending company in the middle. So basically you stake it like you would go down to a to the local, um, just hang on a sec, we've got some questions coming in. Oh, yep, yep. Good. I agree with the comments in the chat. So the people invest their money and then based on the, or based, they invest their crypto as well. And then based on the percentage, so for example, the one, some of the ones I'm lending off right now are 30 to 40%. So I put my crypto in my Bitcoin and they look at the value and they go, would you know, would you like to borrow 40% of that value? And I go, yes. And then I'm able to borrow it for a small, a, a small fee. And then I'll show you in a second what I do with it. But if you didn't want to do that, you can now just borrow against your crypto and get cash and go and do whatever you want. And you just repay it like you would repay a normal loan, which is pretty cool. It means it does really have some intrinsic value. 
Now, if you if you know if you go, well, I want my crypto, but I don't want to sell it, but I want some money right now, then you could just go get a loan against it and then pay it back at some time while the crypto goes up. A little bit like sort of houses. You buy one and you hope it goes up in price. So that's one strategy. Another strategy that um, I've been using is to put a put the get some crypto, borrow against it, and then use the borrowing to run on the forex. So here's one of my accounts here. You can see, um, and we basically you, you're trading against the forex, making a no decent profit there. There's eighty four thousand in you know five weeks, and use it to pay the loan off, and. You know, and I've still kept my crypto. So I've got my crypto, which is going up in value. I've borrowed against it. And I've also been trading on the markets and being able to get a good return on that as well. So now like, you know, so for example, this particular trading platform here, I'm making about 98% a year. So, you know, 98% um, plus the amount in the crypto rise and, you know, crypto in lockdown looks pretty, pretty good. Now, as I said, you got to seek your own financial advice, but I'm just sharing with you some of the strategies that I've been using. Now, if you want to go a step further than that, you could start crypto mining. So I've had a lot of experience with that. That's been quite enjoyable and it's fun. And if you're a bit of a tech junkie like I am, it's quite cool. You're putting your video cards in and then you're basically watching the mine. Should we have a little bit of a chat question there? So I'm going to have a little bit of a look. Well, I didn't say go and do it. I'm saying this is what I am doing. <laughs> so, yeah, so someone said like, you know, it's not great advice, but, you know, if you know how to do things, then, you know, if you know how to do it, so, you know, I borrow against that 8% and I'm making 98%, you know, 8% minus 98%, 90%. I'm not saying to go and do this. I'm just sharing you what my strategies have been during lockdown. So, you know, I, yep, I understand that this is not for everybody, right? And some people just want to buy crypto. Some people want to trade crypto. So, you know, Take it, take it with what you're comfortable with. Don't, don't follow my advice or what. Don't do what I'm doing. I'm just telling you what I'm doing. So, you know, so you can get into the crypto mining. You know, you can go gold star like this. So we set up our own facility over in um, Niagara Falls, basically looking on the hydro facilities there and getting access to cheap power. And then you can basically mine your own crypto. Uh, and you, you know, and that, and that is a great source of income. You know, you can buy power for about four or five cents. You know, the return on investment these days, if you can get a hold of equipment, is like about three months. It's phenomenal. It's hugely profitable business. The hardest part is getting the video cards or getting the the mining ASIC chips. They're called. So if you if you're interested in that, you know, it's a definitely a very little profitable entity. That's what a small one looks like that you could like put in your house. You know, four or five graphics cards on a little thing. You know, I know a guy that's doing about, he's got uh, two of those and he's doing about 1500 uh, a week off that as it is his little margin. So, you know, if you don't like trading and risk, then this is definitely another option where you're just outlaying for some video cards. If you don't like them, you know, you can, you basically can sell them back on the market and they're definitely, you know, getting more than retail price right now. Um, if you're like me and you want to go even further, you could mine, you could hold, you could then borrow, then you could FX again. That's another strategy. I know a lot of people don't like that borrowing concept, so I won't harp on it too much. But I wanted to show you that you can get a lot more advanced where you're like mining, you buy your cards, you then transfer it and you hold it. You then borrow against the holding, only 20 or 30%. Then you, you, know, you start doing your FX trading on top or whatever you want to invest in. Maybe it's property that you like to invest in. Um, and then you're getting returns through the whole circuit. I so said, this is getting quite advanced. So like, you know, this is just my personal strategies um, of how you can maximize your return. Another option for people who don't like crypto mining, because a lot of people don't like it. And they're like, you know, hey, why, why am I going to you know, wreck the environment? Why am I uh, going to uh, use a lot of electricity to power some miners? You know, it doesn't sound like a great idea for the environment. And if you are that type of person who's like, you know what, I'm going to protect the environment. So I don't want to be part of this. Ethereum, which is one of the, you know, the, the second largest now um, crypto out there has, is quickly switching to what's called proof of stake off of proof of work. Now, so proof of work, it works on the basis that you, you're mining away and you, you're basically, by doing some algorithms, you're basically 
I don't want to get too technical, but basically you're, you're doing some algorithms, you're, you're doing proof of work. And basically because of the economic cost of these algorithms, people just wouldn't want to deceive, they wouldn't want to deceive it or rip off the system. Now there is some gotchas in there, like, you know, when it goes over 50%, but look, for the most part, like I can't ever see that happening. But anyway, they want to transition away from this because the power requirement, right? You know, this, you know, some of these mining facilities are using 30 megawatts, 60 megawatts, more power than most countries. So how do, you, how do you shift away from that? They're doing this thing called proof of stake. And this is where you rock up and you buy a certain amount of the cryptocurrency. And then you you basically become like the banker effectively, I guess you could call it for that, for that um, currency. And you earn a percentage for all the transactions you process. So if you're like, you know what, I don't want to do mining because that electricity thing, I'm, I'm just not, I'm just, it, it hits me from an ethical perspective. I don't want to do that. Um, you can definitely get involved where you can do a proof of stake, where you can, you know, put some money down and you can earn percentage for everything that flows through that. Now, there's a couple more questions flowing through. Okay, so we shift to a proof of stake is for the efficiency and security of the network. Yes, 100% agree. I'm trying to keep it reasonably simple. Um, that's why you need to do your own research. And yes, tax you'll find depends the law about crypto. Gets. Absolutely, like crypto is like any form of income. If you're in a country where you need to pay tax, you're going to need to pay tax. And that does suck. Um, and gas feeds paid some money. Yes. All right. So let's keep going. So another one of the things that you could do is you could run your own ICO, but, you know, and this stands for initial coin offering. And this is where people pay you and you give them a, a token or a coin back. Now, it, it has run into some, some solid difficulties lately. Um, it used to be sort of open slather. People would raise money like Telegram did one and they had to start refunding people. So I can't give you any legal advice, but I'll give you my view on how I see it. If you were raising money like it was a company, then an ICO or a capital raise would fall under the same rules. But if you were selling someone a token, like you would have a token for a washing machine and they could redeem it for a service, and there's no concept that they're going to make more money from it. So for example, if they bought a token for a dollar, they're not going to be able to sell it for $2, then that's a token. And there's slightly different things. So there's the capital raise, we're going to do something and get you a return versus the token where you know, you're going to you could use one token in exchange for a service. And look, they may go up and down in price. That's that, that they could do that, but you didn't enter the concept with this, with this in mind. So you know, if you wanted to start some type of uh, venture where you know you wanted to pre-sell services, you could definitely do an ICO and use that so you didn't have to get investors. And there is a lot of people who've done this as a, as a way of getting their business off the ground. You know, and like you, for example, if I was selling paper, I might give you one token for one block, one ream of paper, you know, and, and vice versa. And as long as you know, you didn't think you were going to suddenly get five reams of paper per token and you're going to make a massive amount of money off it, then most of the regulators are reasonably comfortable with this. But you'd need to check in, in your particular zone or you know, in your particular area um, what the rules are. Now, you you said like Telegram had to do a big, big refund. And, you know, it has been quite a few people pursued. So you got to be really careful with this one. And, you know, most people probably wouldn't, wouldn't go down that because it's quite a complicated route. And that brings me pretty much to the end of what I've been up to in crypto. Uh, so I thought I might uh, answer some questions and, and see what people wanted to know about. So there's a question here for, do cryptocurrencies gain value based on the scale of community involvement, like user demand, scarcity, or the coin's utility? Yeah, so the answer to this is yes, but it has to be someone who's wanting to buy it. So it's one of those things, like if you, made, if you just went and made a coin, you know, and you know, some of the ways you can, there's, there's many websites now where you can just go, you could just make an ICO, you could make a coin, but the question is, if no one wants to buy it from you, then it doesn't have much intrinsic value. So yeah, you normally would have to have some sort of universal difference of why you got it. But there is some coins out there that, you know, they don't really see, um, you don't really see much 
you don't really see much value. Like why is, that's not really much different to another coin. But then there is some that have a massive amount of difference. The, you know, is user demand an important factor? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, look, you've got Elon who tweets about something and the price goes through the roof. You know, like that is, that's definitely about the community and, you know, what's happening with that. So let's just scroll down and have a look at a few more of these ones. Is there any way we can have the presentation by email? Yeah, sure, definitely can have the presentation by email. Just one, one word of warning, as I said, that, you know, these are just my strategies, like the, you know, don't take this as financial advice. I just want you to be really conscious of that. I, I do do high risk investments for high returns. So I don't want you to just copy me and not, not know what you're getting into, right? Um, you mentioned, Michael, you mentioning Bitcoin and Ethereum. What are the current altcoins you recommend investing in, both well-established and most promising regarding uh, their development in the future? Uh, look, there's some there's some up and coming ones. They're hard though because they don't have the intrinsic value, and I don't want to send you off on a on something that uh, takes you down the wrong path. Uh, so then, you know, there's one there's VLS that I'm watching closely at the moment to see where it goes. Um, there's there's quite a few, but the challenge is when they're small and in that other coin space where they're coming off the back of the off the back of Bitcoin, they fluctuate and the volatility is there. And you got to make sure that there's there's a volume behind them. You know, it's not just someone's made something up and put a lot of hype behind it. And and that's always a difficult thing to know because you you are in an unregulated space. And I think that's one of the challenges is to watch, right? Is you, you're in an unregulated space. You have to be very, very careful. You don't know if something's being pumped up and being hyped up or whether there's truly real substance behind it. So this is one thing, it, it is a bit scary. Like with Bitcoin, it's generally headed up, you know, but hey, look, it could disappear tomorrow. It's probably unlikely, but it could. So like, you know, you need to do a lot of research. Um, the altcoins that I would recommend, I would normally be probably looking at, you know, who's Microsoft partnered with, who's, who's some of the big names partnered with and really going, going and following that information around. But that could change on a daily basis. So I wouldn't want you to watch this in like five weeks from now and think, hey, this advice is sound when things could have completely changed. It is something you need to watch. Hello, Paris. Okay, are there cryptocurrencies that are more environmentally friendly than others? Well, Ethereum is definitely trying to make that shift to proof of stake. So that would be one that would definitely be uh, very interesting. There's also another cryptocurrency in Iceland who um, they're looking at the phishing and being able to follow, um, you basically pay into the, into the chain and you'll be able to follow how your fish was, how it came through the world and what sort of levels of mercury that fish was exposed to and how it was tested and stuff, which is pretty interesting. I think food is going to be a big thing in the future. Um, have I invested in any social tokens? I actually haven't. Um, what is the hottest crypto right now? I'm going to leave that one alone because that one just will get me into a lot of trouble, I think. Um, what is your take on Cardano? I definitely think that's a very interesting uh, space. Uh, I'm, I'm very interested in, well, is the, the difference in price in Korea for Bitcoin, which is very, very high versus what it is in the rest of the world and how you make those what's called arbitrage, where you actually try and trade the difference. So one of the things that... Uh, you know, so if let's let's take an example of an arbitrage. Let's say the price of Bitcoin in Australia. You can probably hear my accent is like seventy thousand USD, and the price of Bitcoin in the UK is like forty. Then there's thirty thousand difference between. I'm using an exaggeration to really think thirty thousand difference, but because all the exchanges aren't regulated, there's quite often a gap um, where you can actually buy it on one exchange and then sell it on another at a different price and make money just going around the loop. It's, it's much smaller than it ever used to be. But right now there's definitely a price difference from Korea. So if you have any friends in Korea and you can get you get over there and be able to buy and then make it make the loop, then you can definitely profit. I have a crack in, a, I have a crack in account. I'm just gonna leave that one. Are there taxes in the UK on, are there taxes in the UK on crypto? Yeah, so it's like, from my understanding, I, I'm not, 
doing anything through the UK. All my companies are elsewhere. But um, my understanding is that there is standard income or capital gains law, but you need to check that out for yourself. Um, I don't really know. Some cryptocurrencies offer one on one for US like Tether and this is this justifiable. Ooh. So there's these things called stable coins and, and they're an interesting one because what was supposed to happen is when you someone put one US dollar in, they gave you one USDT coin back and they were always supposed to maintain a level. So if you purchased a coin, you could always supposed to be able to cash it in. But when they went digging into the books, what they found is they actually weren't keeping one-to-one. -one. They were keeping like, I think it was about 70%, 60%. So you got to be careful. As I said, we're in an unregulated industry, right? You, you've got to really trust the people. And this is why it's a wild westy. You can make a lot of money, but you can also lose a lot of money because there's no one policing the uh, people who would be happy with doing unethical things, although it is shrinking, right? So we are seeing the regulators, you know, you're seeing Coinbase come up, you're seeing... Um, uh, Binance come on the scene and really starting to put some really solid ethical foundations in around that. Hopefully they didn't do anything wrong after I said that. But you know, Coinbase listed on the stock exchange yesterday, so or I'm sorry, about a few days ago now. Uh, so I think that you, uh, I think you'll find that that this industry is going to clean up, and especially when you've got America and China in a bit of a geopolitical war. You know, I think you're going to find that they're going to want to clean that up quite quickly. So all the weird behavior starts to drop out. Uh, so let's keep rolling down in some more things. Would anyone invest in something that depends on what Elon says or doesn't say? <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, I have a couple of LinkedIn profiles, so I'll make sure I send it out to you. Uh, how do you see Ripple and their issues with the SEC at the moment? I'm going to leave that one alone because I don't want to get sued. Uh, do you use crypto for actual transactions to buy some goods since that was with its main purpose? Yeah, I do. I mean, that's actually what I've got. So I've got a team of developers that are working on that right now is actually building crypto gateways because I actually think that's going to be the future. Next 12 months, you know, if... I see instant transactions off a phone, same as like you've got in a, on NFC, you know, you walk up, you do a pay, um, you can crest money off someone and, you know, it, it's an instantaneous type transaction. I really see that as a future with very low transaction costs. Now, Bitcoin has something coming up called the Lightning Network, uh, which could facilitate that. We've got our own proprietary way that we're coding in uh, that we think will really take off. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that the buying actual transactions, definitely. And have I done actual transactions? Yes, definitely have. But we need to make it so that it's, you know, for crypto to really be the currency of choice, the number one, it has to be able to be used for almost anything. You should only invest what you can afford to lose. Absolutely, I agree with that statement. Hi from Geneva. Okay. Definitely lots. Uh, there's definitely lots of stable coins. I totally agree with that. Uh, have you bought any NFT? I have not bought any NFT art. I'm like, I'm a little bit skeptical of the whole art thing. Um, just because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to digital art. I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I, I couldn't appraise a good piece of artwork. So I think me appraising a good piece of digital art would just be about the same. But look, obviously people are and they're making fortunes off it. You know, I have heard people say that, you know, maybe it's a bit dodgy. People are, you know, selling things to transfer money between borders. I don't know. I don't know enough about art to really make enough of a comment on that. Um, okay, I'm totally new. Yep, get yourself on an exchange. I'm happy to give out like a little cheat sheet on how to get how to get started and how to get onto an exchange. How much money did you lose so far? Oh, I lost a bit of money. I'll be honest with you. I lost a bit of money to get myself started. There's absolutely... Uh, no question about that. Like when I kicked off, we probably we probably blew about 100K before we really actually started to learn what we were doing. So as I said, it's not without risk, right? But we've definitely gone back on the other side of that now. Um, so you, you have to be careful. But we, we went all in on a big mining facility uh, that was just in the wrong place with the wrong power, with no power grid and stuff. So, you know, if you want to get big into the mining, you know, one thing I would definitely say is to make sure that there's power available in the area. That is number one. And make sure that the power is available. And if there is power, make sure the power is available to the building that you want to connect it to. Because uh, that can also be a big problem, especially if you're going to try and pull 30 megawatts off the grid. And yeah, it wasn't, wasn't the smartest move I ever did because I just thought power was everywhere. Um, 
I'm just having a bit of a scroll through these, these questions to see which ones I can answer now or which ones I should take away. Would universal income work well? Yeah, I think it would work pretty good in Bitcoin. I think chance I hope for. All right, well, I think I've got to the end of the questions. I think I could answer it in, into um, in these things. Oh, actually, there's one more here. You know, what about tokenization and real estate? Yeah, you're starting to see a lot of real estate come up, people wanting to sell their places up or people dividing their place up via, um, via crypto. I'll be honest with you, I'm not quite sure. It's, it's something I'm going to have to watch. Um, I've also seen people like our friends who like do it with their boats. They carve their boats up into coins and then you get a certain amount of, you know, if you, you can rent your yacht out for things. So I, I'm not... It seems to be working for them, um, but I'm, I can't. I can't say I'm not. I'm not sure. <laughs> what do I think the BTC will go to? Well, I think it's only going to go up. Is my personal thing because it's a restricted supply. Um, but look, you can never say that to for sure and always be correct. And you know what ex experts do I recommend and follow on Twitter? It's it's an interesting one. Like, obviously, Elon has, you know, his tweets have made a massive impact on different things. You know, I tend to find when the major banks say something negative, they tend to be buying at the same time. And then suddenly they make a lot of money. So, like, I can't say that's always their strategy, but that's something I've definitely noticed. Um, And where would I get started? So that's an interesting question. Uh, crypto assets backed by gold or silver are better buy. So, okay, so let, let's... Um, so let, let's, get, let's let's step it back a bit. So crypto assets are typically not really backed by anything, but they can be backed by something. And, where, and it seems to be a common theme of like, where do I get started? And I think the, what I would say is, Buy a little bit of crypto and put it in a wallet. Like, you know, it depends on your personal budget, right? Probably I would spend what I would spend on a meal and basically put it in a wallet, transfer it around, get a good feel for it, feel comfortable with it. You know, maybe get two wallets, transfer between the two of them, you know, have a bit of practice and get just feel comfortable. Like I, I feel like I feel comfortable with Bitcoin. You know, and then once you've got that, then you can then you can sort of start to reach out because you're sort of getting an idea what's a public address, what's a private key, you know, what's multi-signature, like how do I have two people sign off a transaction before it leaves my wallet, you know, how do I get a little token thing to protect it so I can keep the token with me so no one can just steal my money, you know, what's a cold wallet. So yeah, what I would do is just buy a little bit. This is just me thinking, right, of how do you get comfortable with something, buy a little bit, have it sit there play with it, understand it, feel really, really comfortable. And then you probably know what really gets your interest and what's really, uh, um, what really like where you want to go with it. You know, if you're into art, then I'll probably start following the NFT in the art world. Um, I do have a website called news.wazinga.com, which I sort of post up uh, crypto related articles if you want to follow that. But there's so much more. I wouldn't say I'm the best journalist at at this stage, but, you know, I know, I know a little bit, a little bit to be dangerous. Um, you know, but it is, I do, I'd probably do spend a significant amount of my time on it. But I'm, there's people that are way past where I'm at standing here. All right. So that probably brings me to the end. I've answered most of the questions. I'm, I'm going to capture the questions of ASW and I'm going to try and answer each one of them individually because some of them are, are in depth, right? Like if and I tried to answer them here, it would just be really confusing for everyone who's like, what, 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 well, don't get it. All right. So I just hang on a sec. There's a couple of questions in the Q&A and then... Uh, Okay, yeah, so similar type questions, you know, like what's the strategy, what's the glossary term? So what I'll do is I'll try and put some glossary terms so when you're on the web, you can, you starting to get a feel for, you know, when someone writes something, you're like, what's this DEFI thing? You know, what does that mean? How does it work? So that you can get a bit of an understanding. Um, okay, and more about staking. All right, and with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you have a lovely evening and I'm gonna sign off and I uh, hope to see you sometime soon. Um, uh, wherever you are in the world, whether it's London, Dubai, Paris, Italy, all, all good locations that I love, Switzerland, and I shall see you soon.